Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Air Hauler 2 with Mimi Her 37. So our last flight, I believe we flew from Rockford, Illinois, over to Chicago, a uh, Meg's Field KCGX. And we're trying to make our way down to Louisville. Uh, <laughs> this is actually like the third time I've tried to do this flight. I can't remember, like the first time, it like just went nosediving straight into the ground on short final. Like all of a sudden the controls didn't work. And I think another one I... I'm actually, I'm short blue screen because we have a uh, senior for Louisville, Louisville from FS Stream Team, which is their stuff is usually intense to to use, but man, it's it's great scenery. So I lowered down the auto gen back down to normal, and I think I've got the scenery for Louisville, uh, I think two notches down from max. So I'm gonna try to do this flight down to Louisville, and some things have changed now. Um, that Hurricane Dorian's going on, and so it smashed the Bahamas, so now there's a bunch of humanitarian missions. So when we get to Louisville, I'm going to switch the plane, our Cessna 182, over to passengers, and we'll do a passenger flight. It's going to be a fairly long one. From Louisville down to our base, down here at Jacksonville, KJAX, we have a factory there. And it, if you remember, we've done missions, it was a long time ago, um, like emergency housing and stuff. We actually have some emergency housing there. Also, we have some plastics there. Um, there's another place over here where we're going to do some flights to bring over some building materials and then bring them uh, over to Jacks back to Jacksonville and uh, try to make some more emergency housing and then fly that stuff over here to the Bahamas. There's like five different airports you can fly over here, uh, that stuff over there to the Bahamas. So that's that's what I'm going to try and, try and do. The only thing that's a hold up right now is I can't seem... I need to buy chemicals and to make plastics. Well, there's chemicals there at the airport, but I can't figure out how to buy them. I don't know if I have to be there or what, but I can't, I just can't buy the, the daggone chemicals. But we'll take, try and take care of that in the next uh, episode. So for right now, we're going to just fly, get over to our plane, Cessna 182. Come on, Air Hauler 2. This is one thing that is really annoying about Air Hauler 2, man. It's really, really slow. It's been really ticking me off. There we are. We're going to position this aircraft ourselves to KSDF. Oh, and before we do that, actually, we need to take a look over here at the map. So, Meg's Field, as you can see, the wind is pretty much everywhere coming from the north. So, we're going to take off on runway zero. That's a heading of due north. I picked some VORs to kind of go down all the way. We're not, I'm going to put it set up, you know, to autopilot. But we'll fly down here, and we're going to, as you can see, the wind is basically coming from the northwest. So, we're going to go ahead and land up right here on runway 29. That's a heading of 296 degrees. ILS is 109.1. .1. Airport elevation is like 499 feet. Like I said, we've got scenery for it. It is freaking awesome. All right. So, the range. I forgot to tell you the freaking range. And I, I just closed it down. We'll see the range here in a second. We have enough for three uh, fuel for 353. Let me see how many percent that is all right everybody i've actually found what i was looking for right there so it's just 62 percent because i remember last time i couldn't remember if it was 33 percent in each tank or 66 but or 62 but so it is about 62 uh percent fuel uh full on the fuel because i have to set that because it's an a28 aircraft uh range is 353 that is longer than i think we need to go so you're going to go 8,500 feet. So yeah, 237. So we'll have more than enough fuel. And both times I've uh, flown this, it hasn't taken much at all. So VFR, um, 1815. I'm going to move that back a little bit from that Zulu time. Or UTC. Uh, so it's, it goes back. I can't remember. It's four or five back. So 237 miles. We've got uh, more than enough fuel. So let's go ahead and I'll meet you over at the plane. All right, everybody, here we are in the plane here at Meg's Field, KCGX. Take a look around. Beautiful scenery as always. From Orb X. All right, so we'll go ahead and start getting this thing started up. 
So we'll say pre-flight is done. No passengers. Uh, seats and seat belts. Brakes are good. Are set. We'll say the circuit breakers are all pushed in. All the electronic stuff is off. Um, avionics master switch is off. Uh, cowling flaps. We got to open those up. So I believe they are open in that position. Did we leave them open? I'm not sure. Uh, fuel selector valve needs to go to both. It is at both. This doesn't seem like it's totally cold and dark, does it? All right, so that is in both. Avionic circuit breakers. We'll say everything is pushed in. All right, so we'll start it up with the battery. It says the throttle open up a quarter of an inch. I usually go a little bit further. Uh, prop high RPM. It's already pushed in. I gotta make sure all, all everything does look like it's off. It's kind of weird how some stuff seems to already be set up. Uh, mixture. It's gotta be an idle cutoff. Prop area. We'll say is clear. Master switch comes on. Flashing beacon. Right there is on. All right. So fuel pump comes on. Push this in. We should see some fuel flow. We've got flow. Take. And fuel pump is off. So I'm going to give it just a little bit. We go to start. That actually says to push it all the way in. So bring the RPMs up just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and lean this out. It's about 50%. Alright, there we go. So oil pressure. Let's make sure oil pressure is rising. It's now into the green, so that's good. Ammeter. It looks like it is charging. Nav lights, uh, we'll go ahead and turn on. Uh, taxi lights, we don't have to worry about. Avionics master switch, we'll turn that on. Turn our avionics on. Put that in the standby. I'm going to go ahead and set this. We're going up to 8,500 feet, so I just want to go ahead and set that. All right, uh, flaps are retracted. All right, next page is the four takeoff checklist. So I think we're good for right now. Go ahead and put our setting to due north. The runway. Come on, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that over to GPS. Come back up here. Actually, if I can get to my seat. There we go. Brake off. Now I need to go find that taxi light. Taxi light is on. Bring that up. I'm going to hit the brakes a little bit and rev the engine. Um, because our temperature, I noticed this last time, our temperature hasn't been getting up, really. Although it doesn't have to get real warm. See our temp down here to get in to be into the green. It seems like it like hardly moves. So if I can get myself lined up, yeah, the brakes don't really seem to work that well. So I'm better just go ahead and bring it back down. We don't want to taxi too fast. Seems extremely bouncy. Yeah, this is the third time uh, flying this thing. I had a hell of a time. Uh, when I got Louisville installed, I this uh, it kept on crashing. That Coatl or whatever it kept on crashing every time uh, I would go to to do the flight. Now, apparently, they've changed it now. Anytime you have an airport, you have to have like GSX installed, uh, or else it just will not work. I found that out in the forum. Someone was asking some other question. He just happened to mention that. I was like, so I tried it and uh, got GSX reinstalled and it started working. I have no idea. They've changed it around a lot, how it installs and everything. I don't know exactly when they did that. But I saw also yesterday, I was checking out, uh, they have Chicago O'Hare version 2, which is sounds pretty sweet. I believe that is only for P3D version 4, which I've gotten. I've gotten installed. I've messed with it a little bit. So that's definitely one I'm going to have to buy and check out. So our temperature is still in the green. 
or below the green, I mean. As you can see, it it doesn't take much to get into the green, but I just can't get it up there. All right, we'll stop right there. Put the parking brake on. Go through our checklist. I don't really worry about cabin doors and all that. Flight controls, free and correct. Looks good. Rudder pedals down there. Free and everything looks good there. Flight instruments, check and set. We're not going to worry about, like I said, about the radios or anything. We'll turn our transponder on here in just a second. I've got switched over to GPS, so everything looks good right there. Fuel quantity, we should be about 62% or so. So on each one that looks good because I did set through A to A. Mixture, now we're going to go to rich, full rich. Uh, fuel selector valve, recheck that it's in both. It is in both. Uh, the trim, trim this for takeoff. That looks about good. All right, throttles up to 1800 RPM. I'm gonna take this away so I can see better. It's about 1800 RPM. Let's check the mags. See, that would be a fail to me. That one actually, uh, Right actually sounds good. I'm surprised one one uh, flight previous it actually they actually both worked, which is odd. Cycle the props. I'm not gonna go all the way down. That looks good. Vacuum gauge is in the green. Ammeter does look like it's barely charging. So I'm gonna bring the power back down. Still hasn't quite gotten into the green on the temperature there. Nussiator panel, there are no warnings. Throttle, I'm not going to go back to check out. Well, we'll check idle. Not to about a thousand or less. I'm going to try and get close to a thousand because we need to try and get the heat up. Uh, strobe lights, we'll set uh, do in a second. Radios, avionics. Alright, transponder is on, nav GPS, we're switched to GPS, autopilot is off, cabin windows are closed, wing flaps will go ahead and set, cow flaps are open. We need to turn on our repeat heat, strobes, landing lights are coming on, we'll go ahead and take the runway. It looks like our temperature is just now getting into the green, too. Honestly, I would have probably taken off with it. Uh, not all the way in the green anyway, but, you know. Alright, go ahead and get going. Push forward just a little bit. Airspeed is alive. 60 knots. Started to pull up there. I pushed her back down. Oh, FSX has gone to the fall collars. Just noticed that. Trying to trim her down here. She really wants to pull that nose up. Go ahead and retract the flaps. So I'm going to swing towards the city and then we'll swing back out to the right. Hopefully we'll get some better views. Last two times I've tried to get some really good views of the city since the scenery is so good. And this is the first flight I've tried. It was several weeks ago was the last time I tried this flight. And now everything's gone to the fall colors. Which it's what? Wednesday? Is it this? third or something just a couple days after Labor Day
Alright, we'll swing to the right here. Working on using the rudder on the turn. Just focusing on that ball. Also, I'm pulling up, I think, a little bit on the nose. If I can do this, I don't like taking my hands off. Damn it. Follow the navigation. Hammer for 8,500 feet. And we'll set. Daggone it. I hate this thing. Hitting the wrong button, I guess. See, I want to do the views, and now we can't even see it. There we go, 700 feet a minute. I'll take a look outside. See, we didn't really go far enough. And I did that long looping turn. Sorry, now the views kinda suck. Well, that's not bad right there. Should have gone farther out. Now I waste that time with the autopilot. A little jagged. I turned the autogen down to a, was it, dense. Then when it started up, I had to screw around trying to get to full screen and everything, so I'm sure that's going to kill some of the memory as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and close our cow flaps. Power down to 23 or full, whichever is less. So if we can look down here. Manifold pressure. There's about 23 right there. Maybe a little bit down. 2400 RPM. We need to start trimming or leaning out the fuel as well. And then we'll get to cruise this 2000 to 2400 on our pressure over here. And uh, RPM will be no more than 80. And then, of course, we'll just keep leaning the uh, fuel mixture. Bring that back up. Let's see this and set this. Get rid of all these messages. There we go. So KSDF Louisville. It's going to be about an hour and 53 minutes. It's 232 nautical miles away. We're just not going to take that that long because uh, once we get up to cruising speed, it takes my off. Active Sky. I think I do like it more than Opus, man. All the problems Opus was giving me. tell you it is bouncy man uh as you can see we got a lot of cloud cover over here so but it is quite bouncy we might have to go i don't know if we're gonna have to go higher or not or lower i guess but i mean hey we're only 4700 feet and already it's bouncing us all around i noticed that when we were taking off as well all right well i'm gonna go ahead and speed on up everybody and uh be back in just a little bit
All right, everybody, coming back in here. Where's that GPS? There's the airport right there. So kind of jagged a little bit. Might need to adjust some settings as well. It was stuttered real bad when this was coming into view. I was like, oh no, is it gonna OOM? But I haven't heard anything yet, and it's it's kind of stuttery, but you know, like I said, I can adjust some settings as well. Because I don't think I've simmed much at all since I got everything reinstalled, so that could be some of what's going on. Right now we're holding right here at 2,000 feet, we're just over 100 knots. Uh, we've got full power, and uh, or sorry, uh, full reach on the mixture and prop RPM. Just getting ready to head over to runway 29. Like I said, heading 296. Uh, it's 109.1 on the ILS. And as you can see, we're that's I believe our I can't tell if that's our runway or not. I thought it was further down. I had some trouble with this airport not too long ago trying to decipher some of the runways. Because actually, FS Commander has an extra runway in there. And you've got to update it uh, so it throws it out or else it'll confuse the hell out of you. Looks like it should be over here. So I can't really tell. But we're about to make our move here in just a minute. Is it maybe right here? This was kind of what it's looking like to me. Just can't really see it at this point. Well, some of those splashes. Forgot this is a little trick I'm doing to get rid of them. Go around a few times. Usually takes care of them. See, we're getting close to making our turn. And also, I noticed we went straight to KSDF instead of those VORs. I forgot Air Hauler 2 does it straight to there and it loads the navigation. Not you got to go up and do your flight plan. I forgot all about that. Although I don't know if I would have done that anyway, because when I start up, I had to go start up uh, Active Sky because I forgot about that. Then I I had a problem getting uh, FSX to come onto the screen, and then uh, I had to go uh, make it from full screen to Windows so I could get Easy Dock and get my view set because it seems to not want to load my thing at first, and then full screen again. And that takes up a bunch of memory. And I know coming down here, uh, that's the last thing you want to do. I'm going to mute my mic for one second. All right, back here. All right, let's try to go 296. Let's see how far off we are. I'll pull back on the throttle just a little bit. Get ourselves a little slow here. So we may have actually got it pretty good right there. Can't remember which button it is. Right there, it looks like, is our runway. Kind of worried, though. I don't... S like our Set that to 1,000. Awesome, so I can't get that sound off. Autopilot is off. There we go. I have no idea what that sound was. I don't think it was the outer or anything, was it? It kind of got me flustered. So I was like, great, I'm going to have to do this video a fourth time <laughs> to get that sound off. On one of the flights, uh, I couldn't 
guess some of the sounds off and it was uh, it ended up being the communications. Can't quite get the descent I want. Look on the power a little bit. First notch of flaps coming out. Push down to get rid of that ballooning. Ah. Landing speed is about 60 knots. So this is like at the northern part of the airport, it looks like. And I thought uh, the runway was actually more towards the middle, actually more towards the south. But apparently not. Second notch of flaps. Don't see any papy lights. Oh, we actually, I think they might have papy lights on the left side. I can't tell. Just too far away. I'm trying to get my pitch right. I'm hitting that button like crazy. All right, last notch of flaps. No, we're a little too high. I'm off the throttle a little bit. We're slightly fast. I'm all right with that. And from the looks of it, we're way too high. Kind of weird that touchdown area is like right in between the two Dagon runways. Let's see if I can manage to not butcher the landing. It's kind of Kind of getting the yips there, like that. That doesn't help. Oh, I hit hard. Smooth. I don't think it was very smooth. Just trying to get that taxiway right there. Missed it. I'm not sure exactly where we should park either. Just take a look outside real quick. might be able to make our way over somewhere like there. Come on, girl. Get off the runway. Flaps are retracted. And we hit kind of hard. It was kind of stuttering a little bit, which didn't help the matter. Not that it was the full culprit. I haven't flown in a while. That was my second flight and I don't like it over a year, so not not horrible. Um pedo heat can come off. Strobes and landing lights can also come off. Open the cow flaps. Kinda hard to see. Transponder goes to semi. Hurry up and get across. See, VHDLL, I've got that Easy Dock camera set. I don't know why it won't auto load sometimes. All 
Alright, I don't know how we're gonna get over to a good parking space. I don't want to go over to the jetways. So we're gonna have to stop and take a look outside. Be cool if we could park. That can't park to the right of us. It's got the big X. Guess we're gonna have to go over to the right because those are a bunch of jetways up there. Come on, old girl. See, we didn't use much fuel, by the way. We should trim this out. Yeah, like, so, that's kind of one of the things. Air hauler, I think, has it using a ton more fuel than we actually do because we trim it out so much, lean it out so much. Like, can we actually... Ah, it's got another X. It's like, man, we could park right there. got to come over here somewhere. Be my mic for one second. All right, I'm back. I also like to park so we can make sure we don't run out of memory or anything. I'm just waiting for that. If that happens, I just stop it right in the middle and go ahead and tell air hauler we're done. Better than having to re redo everything. All right, so do can we? I think we might have to come down over here. I don't know if we can cross over there. We'll take a look at it here in a second. I don't want to get stuck where we have to go on the runway and taxi down the runway. That would be bad. I can't tell if we can cross over right there or not. Yeah, we can. Sorry, but I don't know this this airport at all. It's one of those. It's UPS. It's got a. It's a one of the massive. Uh, I was gonna say ports. That's obviously not what I want. The distribution centers or whatever is there in Louisville. It's kind of cool. So can we not go straight across? We've got too much power. The brakes will not stop her. So we're gonna cut straight across. Yeah, the brakes weren't uh, working at all there. That was awesome. That was worrisome. There's UPS on the move over there. As I just talked about. One of their huge hubs is here. I think it's uh, at the other end of the airport, though. I kind of wanted to take a look at it, but at the same time, you know. I need to get her parked. Can I park right there or something? You know what, that's where we're going to park. No matter what they say, that's where we're parking. I think we've taxied long enough. Actually, we'll go right over here. There's a pusher and everything, so we're going to go right over there. Actually, screw it. We're going right here. We just got to get her parked. Man, these brakes. Well, the thing is, uh, when it starts up next time, we're going to have a hard time getting out of here. Come on, thing. Actually, we'll go ahead and turn it around so we don't have to next time. If I can, the brakes are being really temperamental. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and set the parking brake right there. We're gonna throw up just a little bit. Boy, it sounds like she's gonna stall out. 
All right, securing the airplane. The parking brake is set. Throttle. Idle. I'm, I'll bring it back to idle. It just sounds so bad. Electrical equipment all needs to be turned off. I don't mess with that. Transponder. All right, all that is off. Avionic smasher switch comes off. Taxi light, we're no longer taxiing. Turn all this off. Next, we pull the mixture. All right, ignition goes to off. Master switch goes to off. And left or right on the fuel. All right, and with that, let's try to go over, on, over to air holder two. Here we go. Finish flight monitoring. All right. Uh, KCGX Smegs Field at KSDF Louisville. Took off at 228, landed at 411. PM. I thought it always listed how long that was. Well, it was an hour and 43 minutes. It seems long. It shouldn't have taken so long. Take off, took off with 317 uh, pounds of fuel, landed with 268. Didn't use much at all. Max altitude 8,540 feet, max, max pitch negative 10. Uh, max roll negative 21.7. Max speed 138.66 knots. Minimum G is 0 0.2. Minimum G is exceeded 0. Uh, max G is 1.96. Max G is exceeded 0. God, why did that thing move? Stall false. Overspeed false. Landing description is smooth. I don't know about that. Uh, landing gear down true. Land on concrete. No damage to the uh, surface. No damage to the plane. Came down 126.9 feet a minute. It seems a little heavy. Um, landing speed 46.56 knots. Landing pitch negative 3.86. Landing roll 0 0.5. Uh, heading was 299.7, landing wind speed 8, uh, direction 330. All right. So we are at KSDF Louisville. By the way, we do have our base here. I remember we were trying to get that built up last time. Where are we? Why can't I find Louisville? There we go. There's our base right there. Um, So like I say, in our next flight, we're going to... I'm going to go ahead, actually, let's see if it, I don't think it takes any time since the plane is so small um, to go ahead and change the configuration. Yeah, economy only, three seats. Uh, it doesn't take any time. It only costs 135 bucks. We'll make that back in the tickets. Then we got to switch it back over when we get to Jacksonville because we do have a base there as well. All right, so no, it's now a passenger plane. And like I say, the next time we'll take, we'll do an ad hoc flight over to Jacksonville. I'm not sure exactly how far that is, but it should be easiest for us to do. Actually, it's, maybe it's not, well, yeah, it's pretty damn far. Um, yeah, that's the next flight. And then I'm going to try and, I've got a guy going, heading down here right now. He, he might actually be there. He's not there yet. I don't know where he is. But I've got a guy heading down there. He's going to help us out, uh, loading some stuff up and getting some commodities and stuff. And then we'll fly on down to uh, probably free part. I think I've had scenery for that. I might not have scenery for multiple of them. And that's all Bahamas. I can't remember where it is now, but you know, there's like five of them uh, that we can actually fly stuff to. But uh, anyhow, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you all did enjoy it. I'll catch you guys on the next flight.